Yeah, Ryan. There are days that I really do wish I had a sweet Thanos Infinity Gauntlet. Well, I guess not really Thanos, but a sweet Infinity Gauntlet. Because I would use every single one of these goddamn crystals on my children. Okay? The stones would be yeah. used thoroughly because I would just... The time stone, I'd go back in time and slap myself and be like, why do you want to have children? That's a terrible idea. Okay? The power stone, I would just like... I would get my lightsaber and I would do like a... A He-Man, I have the power. Look at that. It's like a Thanos glove with a lightsaber. That's how you really roll, right? I would be yeah, like, I have the power. That's, that's... And then I would just launch my children into the stratosphere, all right? If I had the Mind Stone, that would be the best one because I would control the little minds and they would just be quiet and eat their dinner in peace without complaining and whining. Daddy, why do I got to eat my burrito? Why do I got to eat this? It's gross. I'm not hungry. I'm full. And shut up. You are not Full and you are hungry and you will eat your burrito. Mm. Anyway, so what's up with you, man? Oh, my kids are great. Your kids and aren't there with you. Yeah, that's why it's great. I don't have anyone to. Yeah, and it's also boring. So. Well, you know what? And uh, in the east, the East Coast summer and slash humidity is starting to kick in. And uh, I'm sleeping like butt naked now every single night. So you got that. All right. On that note, we're just going to start the show. Welcome everybody to another bitch fest. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Geek Dad Bitch Fest Report, the uh, the one show dedicated, formulated, especially created to talking about uh, all the things geek. I don't know. I'm off yeah, my game, man. My geek, kids, geek. my kids yeah. done ruined Sorry. me today. What? You're, uh, yeah, it's this is. Uh, Episode 54, folks, and uh, if you want to find the Geek Dad Report, okay. we're on Facebook, at the Geek Dad Report, we're on Twitter, uh, PodHell, and uh, WatchPlayRead.com. Yes, so I would like... Make sure you check all those places, because I'm trying to help Brian simmer down a little bit, Good. because he's still a little worked up, so... Uh, you can find me at BrianWest53, and on Facebook, you can also find Ryan at... I don't know where you at, Big Bruiser? Yeah, Big Bruiser on Twitter. Yeah, spelt not like it sounds, people, so you'll find yes. it. Or you can find mine. Mine's spelt <laughs> exactly like it sounds, and you can find Ryan there, too. Uh, I'd like to correct you, Ryan. Last week was actually episode 54. This is episode 55. Oh. So, um, you know what? Sorry. Thank you for that moment. I'm, I'm a little simmered down now, so I'm going to re redo the introduction. Welcome, everybody, to episode 55. Bam, bam, that many. This many with my Thanos pimp hand. Uh, yes. Of the Geek Dad Report. And we are the one show dedicated, formulated, specially created to giving you guys all the information you need to know and keeping your valuable time just that valuable. Um, as always, I am Brian West, your lovely, not so humble host, and that is my glorious heterosexual life mate, Ryan Thomason. Oh, yeah. Sexy as hell. He knows it. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, yes. I'd say we're here to pump you up, but I don't know. If you're not pumped up yet, I don't know what's going to do it. <laughs> If you're not pumped up yet, then uh, we're not going to pump you up at all during this whole episode. Um, yeah, as you can uh, as you can attest, I've uh, if I seem a little flustered, it's because uh, my geek dad moment of the week involved my children being complete a holes today, and they have swim lessons and things they had to do tonight before I can get the show going, and, and they didn't want to listen, they didn't want to eat their dinner, they didn't want to do anything other than fight, scream, cry, whine. Bitch moan and flop around like fish on the ground. Just, I'm not and, doing it. And I, I hate my sister. I'm gonna pull I, her hair. I'm gonna fight. Why'd you turn the TV off? Why are you doing this? I mean, like we had, we're going camping. We had a bunch of groceries by the door so we can load up tonight after the show. And my kids, what are they doing? They're stomping on them. They're they're just trampling them while they're fighting over some stupid ball. Hence why I, I busted I out. Have no choice, mate. So yeah, yeah. Hence why I busted out the Thanos. This is actually an oven mitt. 
in case you guys haven't noticed. Uh, courtesy of a Loot Crate. If you are not subscribing to Loot Crate, you probably should be. And if Loot Crate, you'd like to sponsor us, I will wear your cool products on our show the, tw- the whole time. But uh, this is too cool not to wear, so I'm going to wear it all show. Well, and that's a good tie-in because our sponsor tonight yeah. is also Thanos Hand Lotion. Thanos hand lotion, or, or is it hand lotion by Thanos? I can't remember. Um, Which I one? thought it was. It's like a cologne line, isn't it? Like, isn't it like Oblivion by Thanos? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember. Their marketing department was Domination. Uh, I think it's Domination by Thanos. I think that's what it is. But anyway, uh, Domination yeah. by Thanos would like us to tell you that you know what? Heavy is the hand that wears the gauntlet, and when you have this beautiful thing on, even though it's nothing but power. All that friction from all the power is going to, it's just going to dry your hand out like brutally. I mean, it's just going to make it so, you know, unusable that no one will want to touch your hand and you will not want to touch anything. with. When you take off your gauntlet to go shake somebody's hand, you know, your, your, your hand is not only grody. It's like shaking a piece of stone. It's terrible. This thing is great, but take it from me. It sucks all the moisture right out of your knuckles. And fingertips. Yes. Or it puts moisture in your knuckles. You don't want it to. So anyway, long story well, short, well, when you got to take care of your business, you don't want crusty hands. Yeah. And when you want to, you know, touch your, your wonderful other, significant other on the face gently, you don't want, you yeah. don't want rock hand. And and it smells like grapefruits. Yeah. So uh, by Domination by Thanos, grapefruit flavored. I think it also comes in uh, purple yum yum flavor pretty good yeah don't ask what the yum yum is we don't want to talk about it because you can't really eat lotion but uh yeah whatever i said yum yum flavor (laughs) scent i don't know is it a scent is it a flavor i don't know these things you know what this is gonna kill us like literally gonna kill us for such a shitty job of promoting him oh wait how much was it six hundred dollars it was it was it was it was i thought it was like we had to give up part of our steak in 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 United States, like he owns the country now. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know. Good luck, Thanos. Come and get some. I got my sweet glove. I'm ready to fight you to the death, Thanos. Boom. I got my infinity gauntlet. Look at this. I got like one, two. I got six stones. Look at that one. That red one. That's a pretty badass stone right there. I don't know what it is. Probably the power stone. It's probably the ether stone. So there's somebody, if you call me a terrible nerd right now, I don't give a damn. Anyway, buy the lotion, buy Domination from Thanos, or else they're not going to pay us any money, and we need money to buy our MacBooks. Yes. That's, that's the next big step. Plus, buy it because I got this sweet-ass glove that Ryan totally wishes he had one. Mm-mm. I do. My oven mint is like a little pig face. It's not... Yeah, it's true. It's not. I guess I already. I guess I did say it was an oven mitt. I should have like t- told nobody and just messed around with it for a while and see if anybody guessed it. All right, that's enough of that. Thanks for our sponsor, Domination by Thanos. Time to move on. All right. Uh, well, since I already talked about my geek dad moment of the week, would you like to talk about your geek dad moment of the week, Ryan? I I don't like I said I don't have one. I I talk to my kids on the phone like once a day for like fifteen minutes and. That's about it. So, like, uh, it. I don't get to do anything dad related. It sucks balls, and I'm very excited that they're going to be coming here in like two weeks. So, that's cool. I'll be able to be like a dad again. Uh-huh. All right. Well, since your kids aren't there and my kids are jerks today, we'll just uh, move it along. We'll save this time. Hopefully next week. We're going. Like I said, I'm going camping over Memorial Day. So. Uh, also, we would love to hear you guys' Memorial Day stories if you're doing anything fun. And if you have any cool moments with your kids, please uh, feel free to let us know about it. And we will talk about it on a show, or you can post it on our Facebook. We'll share it. Anyway, we're all, we're all parents. We do in, most of the time enjoy the parenting. Ryan will be able to parent here soon, and hopefully when my kids uh, settle down, I'll enjoy parenting again too. Um, all right, so moving on. Moving yes. on. What time is it, Ryan? What do we got? Ninja, yeah, Ninja news? news, man. Come on. Did you come up with something Chop. good this week? Yeah. <laughs> Judo chop of knowledge. The uppercut of information. The double eye gouge of nerddom. I don't know. Did you come up with something? You were going to come up with a cool leg sweep. Did you figure anything out? Um, And then you sweep the leg of justice. 
Justice does not have anything to do with information. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Whatever. I'm going to let it slide today. I don't care. I'm in one of those moods. Fuck it. Alright. So, first up on our Ninja News, our number one story of the night. Uh, Thor. Thor, what? Did you have a transition? I was making noises. Oh, okay. Uh, it is Thor news. Thor Ragnarok has Marvel has released a full cast list for this movie, and uh, it is going. It has some surprises on there. Kate um, Blanchett is indeed confirmed to be the main villainess in this movie, which is awesome. We're going to get a sweet female villain, um, and she is an amazing actress. She's going to be playing Hela, who is the uh, I believe the queen of the underworld in Odin Land. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, she should yes. be awesome. So we we kind of knew about her. She'd been long rumored. I don't know if she was actually confirmed yet or not, but she is official. So that was no surprise. But we were a little bit surprised to hear that uh, Carl Urban, who uh, I don't know, Doc McCoy, Star Trek, Judge Dredd, yeah, serious geek nerd credentials. He's going to be playing Scourge, the Executioner, who, if you don't know, usually hangs out with the Enchantress and has like a magical axe. He's a pretty badass. Pretty excited He's about just- that. Chops the shit out of stuff. Yeah, he chops the shit out of stuff. Uh, Tessel Thompson, who was announced earlier, she's going to be playing Valkyrie, uh, who's another great character in the Thor universe. And Jeff Goldblum, the dinosaur alien man himself, is going to be playing the Grandmaster, the Elder of the Universe. So, uh, for those of you who don't know who that is, come on, man, why don't you know who that is? It's not like I had to, like, wiki it, because I didn't know who it was. Yes. He's the Elder of the Universe. Yes, I even I had to wiki that. I uh, unfortunately my uh, Thor knowledge is not as grand as it should be, but um, apparently he is the same race as the as the uh, Benicio del Toro's character in Guardians of the Galaxy, the Collector. So very wise group of people who kind of know all the secrets of the universe. But he will be. And, his. and the best thing about the new Thor movie is that it's essentially going to be a buddy movie. An intergalactic buddy movie with Hulk. Yeah, um, Marco Ruffalo, who is also going to be in this movie, he came out this week and alluded to what Ryan is saying and basically said, this is good. This is going to be the most you've seen the Hulk since the Hulk standalone movie. In essence, this is the next Hulk movie as mm-hmm. well. You know, so that I am really excited about that. We've long heard rumors about the Hulk-Thor team-up, and that's always sounded just amazingly awesome. But this is just confirmation that it's going to be what's going to happen. So he says we're going to see more. Hulk is going to be bigger and badder than ever. And uh, there was actually a little bit of a teaser floating around that somebody had recorded. Apparently it was an in credit scene that might have got deleted. May or may not have been deleted from from, uh, Captain America Civil War that showed Hulk on Asgard. So... I don't know. It looked pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited. I think that was actually a deleted scene from some other movie, but whatever. It was floating around. It was pretty cool. And, it doesn't matter. It yeah, who cares? I'm very, shit. very. I mean, Doctor Strange is up next, which I'm excited about, and Spider-Man next year, but I'm really, really excited for Hulk and Thor. And I think it's kind of fitting, considering those are the two characters that got left out of Civil War. It's pretty cool that we're, I believe, I believe the movie comes out in March of next year, so pretty early we're going to get a Hulk and Thor team-up movie. Yes, and that is, uh, like you said, it just sounds fun, and I'm all for that. So. Oh, yeah. Sounds awesome. I don't know how you go. I mean, I guess there's lots of ways you can go wrong, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to be great. Planet. Um, some, uh, some other kind of casting news with uh, Marvel stuff is uh, Spider-Man. Michael Keaton a while ago was rumored to be the villain. A lot of people believe it's going to be uh, Vulture, which has the, been the end, the big rumor. Um he was on board and then he wasn't on board to play the, the villain. And well, apparently it sounds like he's back on board now that he's, he is in talks and nothing's been confirmed yet, but it's been unofficially confirmed. So looks like we are going to get yes. the Birdman himself, Michael Keaton, also Batman <laughs> playing a vulture, yes. which I think is awesome, which I think is really cool. Well, it's, well, let's see the movie's called Spider-Man homecoming and that's all we really know about it so far. Well, we know, we know uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s in it. Um, there's been rumors that Vincent De, uh, De, DeFario, I think I said his name right, the, uh, the guy's been playing Kingpin in, in Daredevil. There's rumors that yeah. he actually may be in this movie as well, which would be the first crossover from the Netflix series to the movies, which I think would be perfect because Kingpin is a huge Spider-Man villain as well as a Daredevil villain. Oh, yeah. Well, and it would be nice to see Marvel actually like give a nod to something that's not in the, the straight movies universe because... They uh they don't really co mingle their stuff yeah. very very well. 
Oh yeah, it'd be nice if they acknowledged that they have a, a, a TV universe that is supposedly set in the same universe, but you wouldn't know it if you only watched the movies. And not yeah. just that, he's such a great character. The Kingpin, he's his Kingpin is so good in those series that I I think it'd be great. Even if it's just oh, a God, small... Dare... Season 2 of Daredevil, Kingpin was just fucking badass. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Well, then again, if you have... Ever... <laughs> you have not watched... If you have not watched Daredevil season two yet, then you can just suck it. Cause yeah, if you haven't watched it, you're not a fan of the show. I don't know how you're watching our show. <laughs> yes. Well, if you haven't watched it yet, you should. It's an amazing. And knowing that Kingpin's in it is not it does not spoil it. But um, I would just love to. I would love to see his character just pop up in Spider Man. I think that would be a really cool thing. He's like I said, he's been such an iconic villain for Spider Man for such a I'm long just, time. That you I'm can just easily. Sad because... What? Oh. I said I'm I'm just sad because the rhino is one of my favorites, and uh, he was so he was he was poised. You got him to, in you got him in Amazing to Spider-Man me. too. Paul Paul he, he was at the very very end for like thirty seconds, and that was all I got the rhino. I was like oh damn it. Oh well, maybe in the next one we'll see. I'm sure there's gonna be many more Marvel Spider-Man movies coming out because he was amazing in Civil War, which you've not yet seen yet. What is wrong with you? I don't watch that. I don't hear any excuses. I, I, I live in a place where I have no transportation. There's always Uber, dude. Uber. Uber yes. it. They'll even give you a free free ride for like your first time. Pay $12 just to drive to the movie theater to pay $15 for a movie ticket. Dude, just use the Geek Dad Report credit card. That's what it's there for. Oh. All right. Yeah. Do you not have a copy of that? Maybe I should send you one. Uh, let's see. Moving on here. Uh, Disney Netflix. So, you may have seen some stuff about Disney Netflix. <laughs> I don't know. That's a terrible transition. So, Netflix, uh, their stock just went up because guess what? The uh, the deal that they signed back in 2012 with Disney is finally going to start bearing fruit, fruit this year. Coming September, Netflix is going to be the exclusive online provider of all things Disney. So, um, anything released in 2016 going forward will only be shown on Netflix. So, you're... I don't know, your Civil War, your, I don't know, what Disney movies came out this year? <laughs> Anything, all of, Finding Dory, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. That will all be oh on goodness. Netflix, exclusive on Netflix. So um, right now I believe so, Stars. I believe Stars is the the first run provider for Disney movies right now. So that is going to obviously be ending. But, yeah, so come September, all your your new Disney movies will be coming on, on Netflix. Um, I'm sure their back catalog I'm, will – what? I'm happy with that because uh, then I can get caught up on a lot of shit that I haven't been able to watch. So. Yeah, well, and not just that. Just the ease, the convenience of it for the kids. You know, you can just turn – it's it's so much easier just to pop Netflix on and let them find something. I'm sure they'll have their own dedicated Disney Netflix channel or something like that. Um, I mean, this makes a lot of sense for, for Disney and Netflix. I mean, they've been partnering up for all their Netflix shows, and it definitely seems like that's a partnership that seems to be really working well for both of them. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Disney just buys Netflix at some point. <laughs> Seems like it may be going in that direction, but I, I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Well, you know, anybody's got the Disney Anywhere app too. Disney is starting to do a lot of streaming stuff with their products, which you know, for parents like us, that it's super easy. Any, any way you can easily get all that stuff is the you know for the better. Um, there's no word on their back catalog. I'm sure at some point Disney's entire catalog will eventually make its way to. Um, you know, in some form or another to Netflix, but right now it's just all the stuff released this year and then kind of going forward. So if you don't have Netflix, I go get Netflix. It's like 10 bucks a month, super cheap for at least for mm -hmm. everything you get. And then you can watch daredevil season two and one. And I guess Jessica Jones, if you really have a lot of time and bored. Yeah. If you're really bored and you want to be extra bored, watch Jessica Jones. Yeah. Cause Luke Cage, that series is coming out in September. Now that is going to be a good show. All right, uh, last little bit of, do you want to talk, actually, you know, not last little bit of news. Uh, let's see, do you, what do you want to talk about? we got three stories left. we got the, the new trailers, the the TV episodes, let's or the Captain America story. Hmm? Let's, let's close out with Captain, so right. let's do the trailer. And then... Okay, so real quick, not going to spend too much time. Well, one of the trailers we'll spend a tiny bit of time on. Um, there was three new trailers released this, this week. Um, the first one was more of a teaser. It was the the, the the live action Beauty and the Beast trailer. Well, teaser trailer is about a minute and yeah, a half. They don't, really show. Yeah, they much. don't really show anything. 
So, but it was downloaded, watched more than the Force Awakens teaser, which makes no sense to me. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of people excited about Beauty and the Beast. I mean, I think it looks cool, I guess, for what you saw, but... But you don't see anything. You, you see, like, you see Well, you rose. see Emma Watson for, like, a half a second at the end, and you see the rose. Yeah, but she looks like but the rose, and then she's, like, peering, like, over it. Yeah, and then you hear the uh, chandel- you hear the uh, the candlestick and the clock talking a little bit. Yeah. But that's about it. But I don't. I thought it was a cool little teaser. It's definitely, it did what it was supposed to and get everybody talking about it and excited. I'm sure we'll get a full trailer here soon. I think that comes out later this year at the end of the year. So I'm it's sure. actually uh, seven, 2017. Oh, is it 2017? Oh, that's why we're only getting yeah. a teaser. So I, I'm guessing it's got to be what early next year then. Yeah. I wonder if it's the uh, March time slot that usually. June next year. Oh really? Wow. So we do have a long time to go still. So. Uh, it's like a summer movie. Oh, okay, well, we and then I we probably won't get a trailer for a while. But if you saw the trailer, the teaser, let us know what you thought. Like I said, we thought it was all right. Um, something we thought was actually really, really cool. And every time I see a new trailer for this, I actually get more excited for the movie. Um, Independence Day Resurgence released a new trailer, and in yes. fact, they released a five-minute trailer. trailer. That was long. Yeah, I didn't watch the whole thing because I don't want the movie to be ruined. Um, the trailer actually did a pretty good job of kind of jumping around, so it didn't seem like you were gonna get anything spoiled but honestly i wanted to see this because i like <laughs> independence day right so i was gonna go see this anyway oh, but i wasn't honestly that yeah. excited about this movie the first trailer was okay the second trailer i saw was pretty good but these last couple ones that i've seen have actually got me excited to see this movie I, they actually look really good yeah and like like you said this one is like five minutes long so it feels like you're you're watching like the movie in abbreviated form essentially but obviously they're they're not giving away like the big endings and stuff but it seems like you're getting a pretty good capture of what the movie is you know what it's going to be what it's about but yeah i i don't know i don't know how do you feel about it like i said i'm kind of excited now to see it yeah i'm i'm excited about it i remember when i saw it you know the the day it came out and you know, oh, yeah. we with a couple of friends and you know, we went to a movie theater and all saw it and it was awesome. Yeah. We'll have I to, still, when he gets, you know, when he gets chilled. closer, cause I think, I think there's a lot of nostalgia that goes along with, with ID four. Oh and, yeah. And I definitely want to talk I, about that. I think maybe when we get the, the what uh, res, uh, resurgence comes out, I think the end of June. So maybe the, the week it comes out, we'll do a uh, special little independence day. Well, we talk about Independence Day and we'll do some fun stories. We'll do a whole uh, Faithful 50 question about Independence Day. And we'll do like a little Independence Day themed <laughs> Geek Dad report. So, uh, but, but anyway, but if, if you haven't seen the new... If, if there's seen the no new, big speech... Yeah, should I give a, should I give a speech? <laughs> um, if you haven't seen the new Resurgence trailer, we put it up on our Facebook page where you can actually... We've shared all these trailers. You can check them out um, and let us know what you think. Uh, the last one I want to talk about that actually I got really excited for, and I know Ryan did too, was the new Star Trek Beyond trailer. Um, they released the second trailer and one of the big criticisms of the first one is they tried to make it to guardians of the galaxy. And as much as I want star Trek to have action, star Trek isn't about mindless action. It's not a fast and furious movie. Yes. It's uh, it's about something a little more than that. And the first trailer kind of made us think that maybe they were veering away from that, but the newest trailer actually looked r- exactly what a star Trek movie should be. I got really excited when I saw it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, star Trek is more than action. It's, it's, it's diplomacy. It's you know, using um, you know knowledge and science and well, it's teamwork you know, and it's uh, stuff out. it's teamwork and it's a ship movie. You know, yes. it's like a it's like a submarine movie but in space. <laughs> yeah, and don't sit in the captain's chair, damn it. Yeah, don't ever do that. But you know, and it's about aliens and exploration and and you know where Star Wars is. You know, that's always been kind of the the rift between Star Wars and Star Trek. Star Wars has always been about the fantasy action, where Star Trek is much more about the fantasy exploration and the and the thrill of discovering something yeah. new, and uh, you know, being the first people out to meet a new alien race. and And I I think that was something that kind of got lost in the last Star Trek movie, and I think this one looks like it's definitely doing that again. It's going into the exploration aspect of it. I mean, sure, there's gonna be a lot of action, and there's gonna be a bad guy who blows up the Enterprise, which you've seen in the trailer. Um, spoiler, but. <laughs> It, I think it definitely looked much more like Star Trek. Yeah, and it's like you said, the, the first two movies were kind of more just trying to establish stuff, and now they're actually getting to what it feels like an actual Star Trek movie, where they're doing exploration. They're, you know, it's 
It's not like, hey, let's rehash this storyline because that was a really good one. Yeah, so. it, it definitely looks like we have a little. I mean, there's some elements that are the same, obviously, with the Enterprise getting destroyed. That seems to happen. Uh, I believe in Star Trek Three, the Interfi- Enterprise got blown up too. Um, but well, and Simon Pegg was one of the writers on this too. Well, so. but other than that, this definitely looks like a new villain, a new storyline, something new, which I think is really cool. So, but um, check it out. Let us know what you think. As you can tell, me and Ryan are both pretty excited about the new Star Trek movie that comes out later this summer. I'm not sure exactly what the date is, but let us know what you thought about the new trailer. Um, <clears throat> so it's not really news. We just want to touch base uh, for a second on a, on three episodes. One, Ryan didn't actually watch. Three, a uh, little bit of television. We might try and come up with a segment. If you guys have any ideas, give it to us. We are more than uh, we would love to incorporate your guys, the Faithful Fifties, ideas into the show. Um, we need to come up with a little television segment where we just talk a little bit about something on TV right now. Game of Thrones is going. So honestly, um, and I haven't actually had a chance to talk to Ryan about this. I was going to talk to him this week, but I forgot. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Game of Thrones every single week while it's airing. So we'll have a little Game of Thrones segment, but because we didn't prep for it, we'll kind of throw it into our, um, our little TV segment here that I want to talk about. Um, well, do we want to talk about TV or do we want to finish the news and then we can talk a little TV and then go into preacher. Uh, well, you started TV. Let's, we can do two TV and then we'll do the big, news for the okay. week so so um right now i just want to touch base on there was two two big finales for uh shows for our genre and then obviously the game of thrones episode so uh we'll go ahead and touch base on the cw show and we'll finish up uh on game of thrones so the first cw show i want to talk about was uh was arrow watch that on wednesday oh my god it was terrible it was so bad we won't spend too much time because i know you don't watch arrow anymore you gave up on it i am one of the I don't know, suckers, who, even though Arrow has dipped horribly the last couple seasons in quality, I still like Arrow. I like the idea of it. I like Stephen and Mill. But the, the, the season finale of Arrow was just god-awful. The acting was not good. The scripts were terrible. I mean, they were dramatic for no reason. Like, people are hashing it out and having these overly dramatic moments of, like, soul-searching. There is a nuke going to hit Star City. They're on a 27-minute countdown, right? So there's only 27 minutes to try and figure out something. And these guys are having it out, like, with personal issues. And I'm just like, you guys, you have a nuke that is going to hit you. And there is literally no drama. It's all just like... It's all just like uh, soap opera drama. And I'm just like, this is so... And then all of a sudden, yes. Oliver, Oliver... So they're having this big fight in the, in the Arrow Cave. You know, this nuke's coming. 27 minutes. They're having this big fight. And all of a sudden, they're watching TV, and they see that Star City is rioting. Everyone's like, there's a nuke coming. So people, there's a nuke coming, so immediately that means they'll start flipping over cop cars and lighting buildings on fire. <laughs> I mean, whatever. And so nice. they're like, somebody's got to do something. So Oliver decides to take it on himself. He goes out there. He's out of gear. He just randomly appears on the street, gives this, like, 10-minute speech about how everyone needs to work together. And, and it's, you know, they survived everything. They're going to survive this, right? With no, they have no plan, and there's a nuclear bomb about to blow up the city, but he's like, we'll survive this. I don't know how, but we will, and of course, they somehow magically survive it. Felicity comes up with a last-second plan, and they survive, and everyone's like, yeah, Arrow, you're the best. And so, <laughs> so the whole rest of the episode, everybody comes together, and they're all just like, and Stephen Mills like, I thought I told you to get out of the city. He's like, I was, but then I heard some guy give a speech and it was amazing and I had to come back. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so... The whole rest of the episode, they all talk about how Oliver's speech inspired them to be great. And it, it was so bad. It was so, so, so bad. So, Arrow, I'm putting you on notice. A lot of people have given up. I'm this close. But as a loyal fan, you get, you get the first five episodes of season five. If you don't get better... I can just watch Supergirl and Flash and Legends well, of Tomorrow. Because Legends the of Tomorrow isn't good episode. either, but it's still better than Flat Arrow right now. And and the, uh, the obligatory crossover episodes. Oh, so. Yeah, those I'll watch. But anyway, I don't spend too much time on it. Arrow, you can do better. Oliver Queen, Arrow, writers, everybody, you have failed this viewer, and he is not happy. So get your shit together. Yeah. That was terrible. Something that was not terrible, though, was the Flash season finale. That was freaking awesome. Not quite as good as the season one finale, but still pretty damn amazing. If not for if not, for nothing else, then the very end when Barry goes back and saves his mother, and they start Flashpoint Paradox. Mm. Yes, and I was I was like, dude, 
I was when he was talking to Iris, and I kind of had an idea that. thinking what he was going to be doing, you know, during that whole scene. And then he's then he's said, "Oh, I'm sorry," and he like goes starts running back, and then I'm like, "Oh, okay, so where are you going?" And then he's thinking about his kid, like, "Oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna go save his mom." You know what? I didn't even think about it. I just thought, okay, he's just moping around because you know they had the opportunity to do the Flashpoint Paradox season one, and you know. Anybody not familiar with the story, basically Barry goes back, saves his mom, and completely alters the entire DC universe, which eventually leads to the whole New 52. Um, so this is back in 2011. It's a great story, great comic. It's even a better car animated movie. I think we have maybe did, we wrote up a review on it a few years ago. Um, super good. Check it out. But that's a really big event. And I figured, you know what? Flash, the ratings are strong, the story's good. They're not going to do an event like that that could literally change the entire show in Season 3. Well, I was wrong. That's exactly where they're going. Um, Barry's other version of himself disappearing does not bode well for Barry's future, and I cannot imagine it's not going to be a complete Flashpoint Paradox Season 3. Um, I just want to know if it's going to affect Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl. Well, I I think that's probably part of well, it. Because they didn't know about Supergirl before, so I think they might be able to use that Flashpoint paradox kind of bring as a way of bringing her into the universe. Into the universe. Yeah, well, then, anybody, well, anybody not familiar with Supergirl, if you weren't watching it, um, they that that she's in a completely different universe than the CW universe. Um, Bear, or Flash was able to you know show up on her show because he broke the dimensional, the universal walls and was able to travel to her world. Yeah. But as of right now, she's in a different universe. So they're going to have a big, massive crossover. They want her to be part of this world. So obviously they're going to have to do something to bring her in. Flashpoint Paradox would be a great way to do it. But no, Flash continues to be one of the better shows on television. It is, I don't know if it's the best comic book show. Daredevil's up there. There's a few of them up there. But it's it's, uh, one, it's, 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 it's one of the best. It's better than Daredevil, sadly. But... Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. So if you're not watching Flash, we highly recommend Flash. But season two... Nice work, guys. The yeah. finale was amazing. Yeah, and you did King Shark during yeah, the middle of the season. King Shark I mean, and Zoom, and there was ah, they they are not afraid. If you're not watching Flash, you should be because they are not afraid to do anything. They're just like, is it there? Let's throw it in. We got it. Unlike Arrow, who's just uh, I don't want to talk about Arrow anymore. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, we won't even spend too much time on this. I just uh, wanted to give a shout out to our boy Hodor. Uh, anybody who's watched Game of Thrones, which is pretty much everybody, watched a beloved character. Let me give you the Infinity Gauntlet fist bump. Hold on. It's for you, Hodor. Hold the door. Mm. Hold the door. Hodor has kicked the bucket, and only the only way George R. R. Martin could write it. And Hodor actually meant hold the door, and we found out that Hodor's brain was fried in a time paradox. With Bran yeah, fucking around yeah. with the time stream. Way to go, Bran, you dick. Way to get touched by the fucking Ice King, you so, idiot. So, um, obviously, this is spoilers. If you didn't know that, my bad. <laughs> Our bad. But, yeah. hey, it's Game of Thrones. Yeah, it's Game of Thrones. If you haven't had it spoiled by someone at your work or something like that by now, then... If you're one of those people who watch it a, uh, a season behind because you can wait for it to get on DVD because you don't want to spend the 15 bucks for like three months while it's on to get it on HBO Go or now, this is your fault. I don't tell you. But, no, that was an amazing piece of writing by George. And, uh, wow, the show now has gone from like... Lord of the Rings fantasy to straight like Harry Potter fantasy land now, man. You can literally do anything on the show. And apparently that was the second of the three oh, yeah. uh, reveals that George R. R. Martin told the showrunners. Yeah, I can't remember their names, but yes. Yeah, so what Ryan's talking about is when the when the two showrunners sat down with George to map out the final, when they realized that the show was going to pass the books, um, they sat down and they mapped out the final end of the show and they gave him three big reveals. One was that shocked them. One was that Shireen got burnt by, uh, by Lord uh, Stannis <laughs> Baratheon. Um, him toasting his own daughter. That was shock number one. Shock number two was that Hodor actually got his brain fried from a time paradox with Bran and that Hodor actually was short for hold the door. Um, and the third mm -hmm. one apparently is in the end of the show. So I don't know if this is it, but I'm going to go on the limb. I want to say right now, I'm going to put it on record. I've, I kind of touched base with you for a second. No one said this, so I, I may be the first one to say this. I believe that Bran is the Lord of Light. 
You think? Wow. Or I think he will become the Lord of Light at some point. Now, I don't think he'll actually become a Lord. I just think that him messing around with time and trying to and trying to help is eventually is going to be what all these Lord, all these uh, prophets and stuff like that are trying to figure out. <laughs> I haven't mapped it all out I yet, think- but I'm just thinking that's what it is. I think Bran is going to end up becoming being the Lord of Light in some way. I think Arya mm-hmm. is going to kill her sister and become the the Lady of Winterfell. That's that's cold, man. Arya is going to be fucking cold. I think Jon Snow is going to get hooked up with Daenerys, his cousin. His his fellow Targaryen because his, John his half cousin his cousin and they're gonna have weird dragon babies. That's what I'm thinking. No, I don't know. If uh, if you have any ideas of what the last t- twist is, I'm going out. He's saying that Arya kills Sansa. I'm saying that uh, Bran is the Lord of Light. We would love to hear everyone else's theory on what the final shock twist of Game of Thrones is. We'll probably all be wrong, and it's that a meteor hits and or the White Walkers win. <laughs> Tyron's gonna save his sister. Yeah. And then ooh. <laughs> we all know that man. All right. Moving on. Final and we've gone a little long, so we'll make this a little shorter than I originally intended, but um so last little bit of news we got for you is yesterday the uh, Marvel Comics sent a little shock through the comic world when they announced da 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 There's a reason why we're in Captain America stuff, people, because we are thoroughly up- upset with Marvel right now. So Marvel, uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers, if you haven't been following the comic books, has been old. He lost his power. He lost the super serum. And he was this really old, decrepit dude helping out Falcon, who became the new Captain America. Well, due to the Cosmic Cube giving him back his powers, he is now young Steve Rogers again. And he has once again taken up the mantle of Captain America. A little bit different outfit, a little bit different shield. Sam Sam is still the uh, the... Captain America, the Falcon is still Captain America, the official Captain America right now. But it was revealed in the new, so they relaunched Captain America number one with Steve Rogers. And at the very end of it, he kills one of his new sidekicks, throws him out of a plane, and says, Hail Hydra. Um, They have reworked Steve Rogers' history. So now Steve Rogers has actually been, they have revealed that Steve Rogers has actually been an agent of Hydra since the beginning. Since he was a little boy before he was even recruited into the Captain America Super Soldier Serum program. And how uh, Hydra is able to, you know, find that skinny, scrawny kid that would become picked by the military to... Well, there's a lot of theories. The episode basically shows his mom being recruited by Hydra, so that's kind of how they just... I don't know. Honestly, I was pretty mad when I heard it on the beginning because... For me, I felt like this was just a shock value twist, like, hey, let's make Captain America bad, which is fine. Captain America's been bad before, but this isn't just make him bad. This is like, we're going to make him bad, and we're going to tell everybody that he's always been bad, that he's been pretending. He's been a double agent from the beginning, and that, to me, if that is what they go with going forward, like, that is the new status quo, I feel like this is a jump-the-shark moment for Marvel. You cannot take a character like Captain America and turn him evil permanently. I mean, I don't think he will be. Everything he's done has been yeah. a double. Like, no, you can't say everything yeah, that he has exa- done has exactly. been a double agent. I mean, there's just too much shit that's Listen, going on. There. Superman went bad. Everybody goes bad. I don't have a problem with characters going bad. I mean, a bad guy, Steve Rogers, is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, I have no problem with that. But going back and retconning his entire history and to make it out where he's been a double agent all along, you know what? That... I think maybe I got so upset about it because I just watched Civil War, which is based on the whole goodness of Steve Rogers. And that is that in a nutshell is his character, that movie. And uh, to me, it kind of just shows how different the comics universe and the, the, the movies universe is right now, because one gets all their characters really well. And the comic book, I mean, I get it. It's hard to sell comics these days. You have to keep shock, you know, raising, <laughs> raising the bar on these comics. You know, you have female Thors and you have, you know, Sam, Sam Wilson becoming Captain America. And you got all these weird shakeups. The X-Men are getting rid you know, they're getting rid of the X-Men. And, you know, everything else, I get it. You got to sell books and you got to sh- shock people. But to me, turning Captain America evil and, and not just turning him evil, but making him always evil uh, is just... I don't know. To me, that just reeks of like, we're just trying to sell some books. And I think that does a disservice to the character. Now, that being said, it is the comics universe. I have no 
Especially the outcry. I have no doubt in my mind that somehow they're going to put some twist on. Because his powers did get brought back to him with the Cosmic Cube, which can alter timelines and change realities. So I'm sure it'll be revealed that the Cosmic Cube changed his reality. So he wasn't really bad all along. And then they'll have to fix it. He'll be a supervillain for a while. And everybody will have to fix it and whatever. And, and, I'm, and ultimately, that's fine if that's what they go with. But you know, I don't know. I just I hate it it's when they do things. It's different than when they killed him in the first Civil War. So. Yeah, but even that made sense to the story. I don't know. Like I said, if this is just if I, if this is just a you know, hey, it's a cool storyline. We want to do it for you know for a year and then you know it'll go back, which I'm sure that's what it is. Then hey, whatever. But if this is like a permanent thing, I really feel like Marvel really kind of screwed up on this one. <laughs> you cannot make Captain America evil. You just can't. No. No, and it doesn't work. And. No, uh, we'll just have to see where they go with it with the comics. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's written by Nick Spencer, who's a really good comic book um, writer. So I'm sure it's got a great story already mapped out. I will like to say people, I know none of our listeners would do this, but I'm just going to throw it out there since it is the interweb and it gets, finds its way around. Um, he's been receiving death threats from fans about his storyline. Guys, that's way too much. Come on. At the end of the day, we yeah. all love Captain America, but he's, he's a, he's a fictional character. You do not need to send a writer death threats because he wants to create a new story. And besides, if this is a new status quo and Captain America is going to be evil from now until the end of days, this is, that was a Marvel decision. That was not a writer decision, <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah, if you want to send someone death threats, send it to, like, a politician or, like, oh, Donald yeah, Trump. Send it to like at that. Marvel, okay? You know, I mean, there's still a nice publicist who's reading it who probably doesn't want to read those, but Marvel's a faceless entity of an organization. You don't personally send him to a guy who's just trying to make a living. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so Nick, we anxiously wait to see what you have in store for Captain America. I was not happy with the reveal that he is secretly a Hydra agent, and he has been all along, but I'm willing to give Marvel the opportunity to correct their mistake over the next year. We'll, we'll see as it unfolds. Yeah, so it's, I think it's called Steve Rogers, Captain America. Is yep, the comic. number one. It but came just, out on Wednesday. Maybe we'll, we'll – uh, we don't have a hookup with Marvel, which is why we never do comics you crave on Marvel, but maybe I will spring for the four ninety nine. I've already read the entire story outline, but uh, maybe we'll check it out and do a review for you guys next week on comics you crave. Um, anyway, so moving on. We wanted to let's see here. What are we doing next? Preacher, I think. I lost my notes. Preacher. All right. So moving on, we wanted to give you guys. We got Preacher. some questions about Preacher, so we wanted to give you guys a full review. Uh, we were, we'll make it a short one. We'll try and keep it under five minutes because honestly, it's just a single episode. So there's not. Uh, I don't really want to give too many spoilers in case people haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So um, it, it it is playing for if you don't have amc or anything like that you can watch it for free online right now on amc there they got it for you don't have to be a subscriber to anything like that so if you want to watch it the final episode's on amc.com so um also uh itunes you can download it for free on itunes they got the first the first uh episode up there so if you we definitely yeah. We're going to go into Sarah right now. Maybe this will be our weekly recommendation since we're probably going to run a little longer time. Uh, watch The Preacher. Me and Ryan both liked it, and it was a, it was a really it's a really good show. So definitely check it out. Um, that being said, Preacher, it's on AMC Sunday nights. I want to say it's at 10, I believe is when it's going to be airing. The first episode was up this last week. It was an hour and a half, so it's a little bit long. Um, it's written and directed by uh, Seth Rogen and e e Evan Goldberg, if that name sounds familiar, because, yes, it is that Seth Rogen. But uh, do not take his involvement in this, that this movie is a slapstick comedy. It is not. It is actually a fairly faithful it's adaptation. Fairly of, faithful to the comic. Of uh, so. who wrote it? I'm trying to remember who, uh, or not who wrote it. Uh, Garth Ennis, the Garth Ennis comic preacher. Who published it? Was it? Um, Vertigo. Vertigo, it? thank you. So, yeah, so anybody who doesn't know, Preacher is based on a series of comics by Garth Ennis, like I said, um, from Vertigo Comics fantastic comic books, kind of crazy. They were always kind of developed for that. They could never be shown on TV and we'll get into a little bit why that is in a second, but uh, just batshit crazy series. Um, I think it ran for like 50 issues, super good comic book spawned a lot of, yeah. a lot of side stories with the Saint of killers. Up in a graphic novel now. Yeah. Um, I highly recommend it. I should, you know what? I should have made that my recommendation, 
but uh, I did not think far enough ahead. But I have the graphic novel upstairs because I showed you. Pick it up on Amazon. You can get it for like 15 bucks, 16 bucks. Well worth the read. But um, this series okay. is based on that. It stars uh, Dominic Cooper as Jesse Custard, Joseph Gilney, uh, Gilligan as Cassidy, and uh, Ruth Nega as Tulip. And anybody who's read the comic books, that's name, those names sound super familiar because they are ex- pretty much ex- almost exactly the characters they are in the comic books. Except for Tulip. Her character is a little bit different than she was in the comic yeah, Tulip is just a little bit different, but uh, you, you can't help but smile, especially during her introduction scene. Yeah. Where she, she's with the two kids and stuff oh, like that. That, that was to do work and crafts. So how are we going to talk about this? So without spoiling anything, we don't want to give anything away. And it's it's hard to not give so, anything away without talking about it. But ba- the basic of this show is that a, a, a guy, a pre- there's a preacher in Texas who clearly has a, a – a sketchy past who's trying to be good. Yeah. He's, he's not a good a preacher. Very sketchy past. Yeah. He's got a sketchy past. He's trying to be a, a, a small town preacher. He's not very good at it. Um, you know, and in the meantime, there's this kind of cosmic force going around searching for a host who's blowing up preachers and Satan worshipers <laughs> very violently. Yeah. And Tom Cruise. Yeah, and Tom Cruise, that was hilarious. Um, I don't want to spoil that for anybody, but there's a fun Tom Cruise kind of exploding thing. Uh, so that's going on. In the meantime, there is a vampire named Cassidy <laughs> who's floating Dude, around being hunted vampire by vampire hunters. He was indestructible, apparently. Dude, that uh, was hilarious when he's like, come here, cow. <laughs> he's all exploded yeah. everywhere. Like I said, we, we're not trying to be vague about this. We just don't want to ruin anything for you guys. We highly recommend you should watch this show. The only thing I'll say is this show is batshit crazy, just like the comic book. The first hour and a half are so all over the board. I mean, it is, I don't know, it's probably, what, three or four different but genres? But it's all over the board in a good way. In a good way, yes, in a very good way. Um, I will say that it will be it will be difficult for some viewers to kind of figure out what's going on. I knew what was going on basically because I'd read the comic book, so... The, the the elements of the story. If you've read the comic books, you're gonna you're gonna be able to pick out the the you're gonna be able to figure out what's going on fairly quickly because it it, mm-hmm. it mirrors it enough. If you've never read the comic books, there's some definitely a learning curve in this, and you're gonna be like, what the hell is going on? Because even Cassidy is a vampire, he's an Irish vampire. You don't really know he's a vampire in the very beginning. It's not like he's got fangs and kind of jumps around. You don't really kind of realize he's kind of a vampire till towards the end. But you know. And Tulip is <laughs> – I don't even know what's going on with her storyline. She's crazy too. They're all crazy. They're She's all – crazy, badass killer. So. Well, not just that. When this cosmic force is going through the universe, it looks like a really bad you know, 50s television sci-fi show. Yeah, but that was awesome because it went through Saturn. Yeah. And it went through it went through the rings of Saturn just go and it just like started like shooting off like pieces of the ring everywhere because it's just like going in a well, straight yeah, line. And then when it gets close to Earth, like there's a thing that pops out that says Africa and it blows through that. <laughs> I mean yeah. it's it is a different show. You are what's and I think that's one of the things I really liked about this is very much like the comic book is a is a very different type of, of comic. The show is a very mm-hmm. different type of they could have easily played this Walking Dead style, very kind of realistic and and yeah, which I mean, they already have two Walking Dead shows on AMC, yeah, so well, they they could, you know. Yeah, and they could have. I mean, clearly AMC's got a formula for these comic book shows that works well for them, and they could have done that with this. And I, I actually respect them a lot, and I respect uh, you know the the Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg for kind of going out on a limb and really doing something different. And I think it works really well. Um, it's not campy, even though it's supposed to be campy. You take it. There's moments that are that are camp, but it's a very serious show. It's funny, yeah. but like I said, it's a very serious show. It's way over the top violence, but it's done in such a way yeah. that you don't like. Dark you're not sick. Gritty. Yeah, it's not like Walking Dead violence where you're like, Bleh. people are exploding and you're kind of laughing about it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's, it's especially I, the. the, the Oh, like I, I said, anything, I'll, if I'll you watch the show, you're going to understand why me and Ryan are having a hard time talking about it because we don't, we really don't want to ruin it for you guys. It is a lot of fun. Um, we both recommend that you should watch it. It is, it is a definite watch the whole season. I think it's going to be great going forward. If at the end of it, you, you don't know what's going on and you want a little more clarification, feel free to hit me and Ryan up. We will explain more about the show. Uh, my wife, she wanted to watch it with me because she knew nothing about it, but she does like The Walking Dead, and and um, I kind of 
I kind of told her, I like, listen, this is a batshit crazy comic book. I think you're going to like the show. And it was, in the beginning, it was a little weird watching because she was so lost. And by the end of it, the episode, she's like, she just wanted to know what the cosmic force was, what was kind of going on. And then once I told her the basics without giving away too much, she's like, okay, I, okay, I like the show now. And I'm like, all right. Cause Especially, um, uh, what's his face? Yeah, face, uh, arse face? Ass face. It's, arse it's, face. It's, it's arse face. It's face. But yeah, that's, uh... I haven't told her what that's all about yet. So I'll let her figure that out on her own. But there are elements on the show that you, even if you've never read the comic book, you will be lost at the end. The first episode doesn't give it away everything. It doesn't explain everything. Um, it definitely has a 13, you know, you could tell it's being stretched over 13 episodes. They definitely want to make sure that you watch, are committed to watching the whole thing. But that being said, I think it's going to be a great show. And I, me and Ryan think you should, uh, we both give it two thumbs up. You should right. definitely be watching this. Definitely check it out. And like we said, it's free on iTunes. It's free everywhere. You don't need to pirate it or do anything like that. They want everyone to watch it. So. Yes, watch it. Watch it. Love it. Let us know what you guys think about it. Um, and then let's see. Okay, so moving on. I'll have to hurry this up. From the Faithful 50. I'll have to hurry it up. My kids are going to be busting uh-huh. through the door in about five minutes. So um, everybody, me and Ryan, we talked about it last week. We're kind of doing a new format for the show and partly because – He's on the East Coast. I'm on the uh, West Coast. And the only time we can do this is when my kids go to swim lessons for uh, swim lessons for about an hour and a half. But there may be times on this show when, towards the tail end, you hear a whole bunch of kids coming in being really loud. Because if we go along, that could happen. <laughs> You've been warned, everybody. We aren't lying. We are both geek dads. But you know what? We're committed to making this work for you guys. So the, the first question that I have, because uh, it was um. It was on my thing. All right, what do you got? Uh, so Jeff, Jeff from uh, Washington, mm-hmm. he says season one and two of Arrow were awesome. Three was good. They then they seem to jump the shark on season four to oh. the point where it's almost unwatchable. <laughs> what other shows, in your opinion, started off hot but fell flat in the long run? Well, wow, looks like me and Jeff are on the same. That's kind of funny considering what we talked about about Arrow. Um, I'm going to say Lost. Lost was started so Lost. great and just ended terribly. I'll go with uh, Heroes. Oh, that, that's, the yo. first season of Heroes was amazing. Dude, one of the best seasons I've ever seen on television. Yes, and then it just went from there. Right. Well, there you go. Heroes and Lost. Um, yes. As always, we like you guys to answer your own questions, too. So after the show, if you guys have your things you'd like to tell us, what you think, uh, hit us up on our Facebook and let us know what you think. A show yeah. that was great that ended badly. All right. Uh, let's see here. Phil, want to know a little bit about Preacher? Hopefully. Oh, wait a minute. He wants to know how much of a badass the Irish vampire is, his new hero, because Phil is a is a uh, well-known Irishman, so he probably digging. <laughs> I'm sure he's digging cats. Uh, you, you'll be pleased. Yeah, Phil. Well, I think he's watched it. He just wanted to hear our thoughts on it, which we just gave oh, him. Okay. So, uh, I I think he's a very good Irish vampire. Yeah, he's great. He's he's also my Irish hero, Phil. Cassidy's great. Yeah. And welcome back, Phil, and congratulations on the new child. Yeah. It's good to wait, hear from wait you. Wait to have more babies. Yeah, good job. Populating the earth with more Irishmen. More yes. little Cassidys. <laughs> All I'm right. So uh, he had a follow-up because he, I told him we were going to be talking about Preacher, so he's like, well, I'll come up with a better question. Uh, he wants to know if it's true that we took a whole month off just so if we if our time off was just so we could camp out in line to see X-Men Apocalypse. Yes. Fuck you, Phil. Fuck you. That's all I'm going to say about that. And he wants to know if a scantily clad Olivia Munn is the only reason to actually watch that movie. Yes, that is actually true. I will give you that. I can't argue. Yeah. I'm that? not excited for X-Men Apocalypse at all, even a little bit. I'm, I, I'm not even positive I'll see it in theaters. Yeah, you still haven't seen Civil War. You're definitely not seeing X-Men in the theaters. <laughs> let's be honest here. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Brian from Washington. He wants to know what our favorite thing to do Memorial Day weekend was before we had kids and then after we had kids. Uh, before I had kids, uh, get really drunk and have drunk sex. And uh, Like we share the same brain. <laughs> and now that I have kids, I, I don't get to do anything fun. I Barbecue, probably. Um, well, before I had kids, we used to go... T- we go out in the woods with a tent with some friends and we just camp for four days straight and literally just power drink for four days. And like you said, have as much drunk sex as you could have. Uh, and then now that after I have kids, I pretty much 
don't do any of that. I mean, I drink a lot usually, but I start day drinking now. So when you go camping, you go out and you do things like chop wood and shoot guns and I don't know, go four buying. And then, you know, start at 10 o'clock, eight, eight o'clock, you have a bonfire after a big meal. Then you just power drink for 10 hours straight. Now I yeah. get up in the morning at like nine and have a cocktail and I start drinking at like nine or 10 and I slowly drink all day long. So then I go back to bed at like nine with the kids. <laughs> Actually, that sounds terrible. It sounds like I'm a raging drunk all day. I don't. I just, honestly, now that I have kids, you do enjoy different things. I mean, I, I, I try, we go camping. We have a trailer now, so we go camping in a trailer, so it's a little bit different than tent camping. But, uh, but you know, we like to do things, the things you don't normally get to do. So, you, you know, I take them out and ride bikes all day with them and, you know, play yard games with them and all that fun stuff. So, we're, yeah. we're going to go, we get, we're going to be uh, staying at a friend's house by the ocean, so... Uh, we'll probably go look for clams or go crabbing or doing some fun stuff with them on that. So, you know, you just, you enjoy yeah, it. I, I prefer to enjoy it with a cocktail, but I still enjoy it with my kids. I, I missed the Memorial Day weekend from when I was a kid because yeah. my parents had a convo. I was on the Columbia River right outside Wenatchee. So we would go nice. there for Memorial Day and just, you know, hang out by the pool and, you know, go on a boat and That's ride cool. around on the river. So Yeah, well, that's kind of what we do. We try and have fun family stuff instead of just raging, you know, 10-foot bonfires and drinking as much hard alcohol as you get into your system without dying. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't puke, it wasn't a good night. Yeah. All right, and finally, from Chris. Welcome back, Chris, as well. We haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, Chris from Washington, he wants to know if uh, what moment in history would we change if we could? Oh, man. Man, if you would have asked me this about an hour ago, I would have said I'd go back in time and change the day I decided to have kids. <laughs> um time gem people time stone make it happen <laughs> you can always say you can go back and punch hitler in the face or something like that but i don't know what would i do that's a good one man i mean you could go with something I, easy i would go back in time and uh i'll tell you here i'll tell you what i would do i already know this so in 1996 when i graduated i had a money tree and i got like 300 bucks for my money tree, right? Not a lot of money, but you know, I think I wouldn't spend it on beer and stupid stuff, right? What I should have done, if I could go back and change any moment in time, what I would have done is I instead of, instead of spending my three hundred dollars on beer money, I would have taken that three hundred dollars and bought Apple stock when it was at like two dollars a share. Uh, Ninety nine, it was about no ninety six. It was like seven dollars a share. Ninety six, it was like. Nothing. I could have bought no, ninety six. It was like two dollars a share. They, yeah. they had. So I could have I, bought a hundred and fifty shares. Lot, so I could have bought a hundred and fifty shares that right now are valued at like a thousand dollars a share. So, well, been all right. That's what I well, would do. It's not, it's not that much. Right, they six hundred bucks a share. They did a stock split, so they. And do you, I I follow the stock market very heavily. Do you want me to get like super? Okay, well then I would have. But... You know what? Fine. You're being too technical. I need something to make. I would gather all the money I could, and then I would have rounded up as much cash as I could and bought as much Apple stock as possible in '96. Why are you shitting on my moment, Ryan? You know what? I'm trying to do a little a little bit here. You know, I'm sure Chris is thinking that we'd go back and punch Hitler or stop the JFK assassination. No, I'm doing something for me. I'm going back and buying Apple stock. And we're doing the geek head report yeah, from the we're doing the geek head report from the goddamn penthouse in the Caesar's Palace. That's what we're doing. Yeah, but no, but Apple doesn't pay a dividend, so you don't get actual any money. I would have sold all the stock when it was at six hundred dollars a piece, Ryan. Why you got to be a dick? Well, <laughs> I don't understand why you would invest in something that you'd have to wait for seventeen years until you can because get any kind of future me would have told you younger me that hey, guess what? In like 2017, 15, this shit's gonna be worth six hundred dollars a share. Just kick back and relax. They're gonna bring back yeah. Steve Jobs, and you're gonna make a or, buttload of cash. Or you could have come back and t going back in time and said, "Hey Ryan, what stock could I invest in that would actually pay you me a what? dividend?" For those I want to change my mind. I want to go back in time and punch what? Ryan in the face with my Infinity Gauntlet. That's what I want to do. Hey, my name's Ryan. Do you want to be friends? And I'd be like, "Nope." Boom! Uppercut right to the face, dick. God damn it. You know what? The segment's over. We're done. Thanks, Chris, for your question, but Ryan ruined the moment. Now we're moving on. Recommendations. What should you or shouldn't you fucking watch or do or fucking experience for the week? Dick. What are you laughing about? <laughs> you know what? Fuck you. I recommend everybody watch the Seattle Mariners because they're winning a shit ton of games and walk-off home runs in the bottom of the ninth. So if you like baseball, they're really exciting. 
And I didn't have anything else, and Ryan was wearing the hat, and I, that's, I came up with that right then, because that's what I do. I also recommend that you should watch Preacher and buy the comic book, Preacher Volume 1. And I recommend that you should build a time machine so I can go back in the past and punch Ryan in the goddamn face. <laughs> My recommendation is don't make Brian mad. <laughs> you wouldn't like me when I'm mad, Ryan. Between you and my children? I wish this was a real Infinity Gauntlet. You motherfuckers would be going down, all of you. <laughs> Time Stone, back in the past. Punch right in the face. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed yourself. God knows we have. Uh, I think that's about it for another episode of the Geek Dad Report. What do you think? I think it's good because it's late as shit. And you know me. what's funny? I can see my kids coming up to the door right now. So on that note, everybody, thanks. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. We'll catch you next week. Yeah, have a happy Memorial Day, everybody. Let us know what you did. Send us pictures. We'll post them on the Facebook page. Adios. Yes. Oh, also like and subscribe our channel. We need lots of subscriptions. We need lots of money. Money. Yeah. We do this for the cash, not for the love of it. Like, subscribe. And, like, subscribe. Uh, tell your friends. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All right. All right, everybody. Till next week. Bye, everyone. As always. Bye, everybody. Just pop. Ain't even a buck, ain't even a sense of making up. We was out there chasing up the stuff that you only.